Hey guys, so uh, this is an agriculture college, right? <laughs> Food, ag, environmental science. So I'm out in a field. I thought I'd come to you for my farm today. Great place, beautiful day. I can't really see my screen, but that's okay. We've got uh, some crops here in the front. We've got corn in the back. Wait a minute, does this look familiar to anybody? Well, maybe it's because I'm actually over at Waterman. Uh, yeah, you may have been here before. And uh, guess what's behind me? Behind me is, I reset my computer here, something like that. Uh, behind me is the new Waterman facility that's under construction right now. So why on earth am I starting this strategic planning section of this class at Waterman with a new building under construction? It's very germane to the point. Bottom line, the decision making that went in to, to siting this building here, to developing this farm or adding to it, was huge and it was strategic. There was an amazing amount of thought. And organizations every day are having conversations like this. This farm is a couple hundred acres in the middle of Columbus, Ohio. This land is worth millions of dollars. I have no idea what the estimate is, but I guarantee you it's high. So who made this decision? What uh, strategic thinking went into starting a new facility here where the public could come in and could start to learn about agriculture? There's a lot going on with this. And so I couldn't think of a better place to start this discussion. So welcome to uh, the second half of this class. We've only got about five lectures, I think, five weeks to just run through strategic planning. So what I'm gonna to do today is give you a quick overview, just kind of 30,000 foot, <clears throat> and then I've got a part two to dive into with a little more detail, and we're gonna jump right into this. So here is uh, from earlier this year. I've been working with the college and with the dean and the associate dean on doing strategic planning for the college. We've talked to over 400 people, um, about 450 in person, We've, uh, we've done Qualtrics surveys, we've gathered input. The picture here is from uh, an input a session we did with uh, external advisory committee members to the college and uh, up at a beef facility up at Worc Worcester. <clears throat> so we've gathered a ton of data. Uh, there's a lot of processes. And so what I wanna uh, share today, I'm just I'm trying to remember what I wrote on here last night late. <laughs> uh, I wanna give you examples from real life. So I'm gonna run through the optional text and give you that text and theory and, and that kind of thing and kind of their, their specific process. But then I'm going to, to give you a lot of real life examples of work that I've done over the last 20 years, really digging into some serious strategic planning, both at the university level here in our college and with the Fisher College of Business and the College of Engineering. I've done a lot of work uh, just really in the last couple years with those guys. Um, and so I want to talk about some of those examples and I also want to share some materials and, and templates and, and things that I have pulled together myself uh, that I think will be very useful to you aside from just what the text and those outlines are. So uh, we're going to jump in. There's a ton to cover. So let's just do it. Here we go. 30,000 foot. Here's the optional book that I talked about. It's pretty good. Uh, it's based on nonprofits. Of course, University is a nonprofit, uh, but these principles are pretty universal. I've also used them with for profit businesses, so don't let the title fool you. Um, it's pretty germane to that conversation of strategic planning. So, <laughs> with all that introduction, what is strategy? What is a strategic planning? What is it? It's a systematic process. So, let's think, you know, definition. You want to use uh, existing data, but also look at new data. You want to look at the engineer or the organization and uh, and, and see where we can move forward to get this stakeholder agreement. That includes our internal and external uh, customers. Uh, acquisition and allocation of resources. We wanna use a plan, and I'll talk about this here in a few minutes. Some people say strategic planning's passe, and you don't really need one. Things are changing too quickly anyway. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but that's not true. Uh, things are changing quickly, so we need to plan more than ever. And I'll give you some really hardcore, very current examples uh, from real life groups who, who are working with thousands and tens of thousands of people. Um, so uh, strategic planning helps two critical outcomes. It gives you some clear decisions about the purpose and your strategy, and it gets back uh, to giving you a basis upon which a foundation to stand on those commitments and to make those decisions. 
So just a couple of critical pieces that can really come out of strategic planning. It's really cool stuff. It's really powerful stuff. So why plan? Well, I just gave you an intro there or a, a clue. Um, strategic planning can help your organization increase your impact. They can help you set your priorities and get really intentional about that. Uh, they can really help you focus on your mission and, and the 8420 class that I teach on leadership I go pretty heavy on mission and and talk about your why and if you haven't read or watched uh, Simon Sinek read his book start with why or watch his 17 minute uh, TED talk tune that in and watch it it's very germane in fact it's probably I'll link it if I haven't given it to you yet I don't know uh, it's Monday <laughs> um, they can also help uh, organizations um, do things differently. How do you improve processes? How do you improve design? How do you think about strategically uh, how you make improvements? Maybe in your products or in your services, whatever your, your organization's doing, whatever that um, business model is. So there's just there's a lot to think about. There's a lot that goes into it. And, uh, and again, we're going to walk through it piece by piece. Today, 30,000 feet. Managers, you may have heard this saying, do things right. Leaders do the right thing. Well, Managers do the right thing too, but but just as a as a uh, kind of a couching for setting the strategic plan does both. So from an organizational focus, you want to think about explicit understanding of the organization's mission and strategy and values. What are those things? We just finished and sent to the dean this morning actually uh, the distilled values that we got from talking with all the different people that we that we spoke with over this last summer of 2019. Uh, to let her review those and, and to see kind of what those key things are uh, and to reiterate those. So those are going to show up uh, when she gives the State of the College address here in 2020. Um, the blueprint for action. So it will be a decision-making guide. Uh, strategic plans can literally do that, can give you, again, that foundation upon which to stand to make critical decisions about spending some millions of dollars <laughs> Uh, in your business, your operation, whatever it is. It may only be tens of thousands, but if you're a small organization that's serving youth, those tens of thousands could equate to the millions in this, in this case. So don't think just because you've got a smaller organization, I've got some examples of those too coming up, uh, that are real life. They can have major impact on people. Uh, broad milestones, how do you monitor achievements? assess the results so how do you measure what are, the, what are those metrics those need to be included and again we'll talk about that and uh, information maybe that helps market your organization if you're a nonprofit in particular uh, that strategic plan in fact the united way used to require strategic plans for their organizations in order for them to get funding from them and there was a reason for that it wasn't just to give them an exercise or something to do so have you ever had been in an organization where the, the boss walks in one day, or maybe it's a new person, and they say, oh, I've got your new strategic plan. I've just developed this. <laughs> well, that sucks. <laughs> Let me just tell you, pardon my French. Strategic plan is a process, and it's about bringing people together. And you can't just have one person say, this is the plan. That's a dictatorship. That's just deciding. Um, and that's fine. There are places for that, and there are times for that. But on a strategic plan, if you really want the benefit to benefit your organization, you need to do you need to undertake it as a process and there are reasons that you bring people together to, to, to discuss your shared values you want to have that communication that teamwork and part of the process itself is actually building an alignment uh, in fact we call this year's uh, college strategic planning process a strategic alignment process I did the exact same thing last year with civil environmental and geodetic engineering department uh, and talking with their chair um, they really wanted to have a team alignment structurally to get everybody kind of knowing each other better and understanding what they were doing so that they could then focus in on what the key pieces were that they needed to do to move their department forward there in engineering and to improve their services to their students and their customers and their outreach and their research and their mission. Really cool stuff, but it started with this alignment process and I'll give you some uh, uh, some tools that I've developed here recently on the last, I don't know, five or ten years. Uh, that's recent. Um, that can help an organization think through that. So that before you even start the process, the very first conversations you have are about really alignment. Anyway, all right. Uh, we're going to be here all day. Uh, how do you focus? And these guys are probably working wondering, what's this nut doing over here talking to his car? Uh, <laughs> all right. 
self-amusement, you know, it's all part of the fun. Uh, focus your attention on what's important, mission, I, I think I t touched on that. Encouraging thinking about ways to adapt to changing circumstances. Absolutely, as the environment changes, as um, uh, farming has changed, as food has changed, our college has changed its, its mission to a degree. We've definitely, well, not so much, we're still sustaining life. <laughs> Uh, with food, with agriculture, I mean, that's bottom line. But how we go about that, some of our objectives, some of our strategies have shifted, and they absolutely will continue to do that as we evolve and as things change. So, um, what is strategic planning not? It doesn't predict the future. You have these futurists, uh, that's a different thing, and it's there's some valid um, work that's done in that area. Uh, it's not a, a substitute for judgment of leadership. Leaders still have to make critical decisions at times, without asking. Sometimes it's just, you know, a decision has to be made. Um, there's not, it's not a math problem. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, but you can intelligently and systematically put into uh, process a, a, a procedure or, or a, uh, a system, systematic plan that will lead you to some pretty good stuff. Saying that, it's also not completely linear. There's going to be structure and systematic, but it's not always completely linear keys to the planning. Um, the plant doesn't cover everything. It tries to focus on, particularly now, because I, and I, I'll mention this in a few minutes, um, I talk about three years. <clears throat> People used to do five and ten year strategic planning, these long-term strategic plans. Maybe that was good, maybe it wasn't, but today we never do that. We talk about three years and we talk about revising that plan in process, so it's more of a dynamic and living uh, document. So what does it do? It helps you focus on the important issues, avoids, uh, but, but you do not avoid sensitive questions. You've got to, uh, you've got to address and, and dive into those. You do want to document, you do want something at the end that you can point to and say, hey, this is what we said are our priorities for this year, for these next three years. And then you want to link it to your plans of work and your budget and things like that. So, you know, it all kind of comes together and I'll talk about this in a lot more detail. What's a strategy? Just again, 30,000 foot. It's uh, thinking about the method for achieving that goal, the longer term. Your mission is that purpose, your strategy, the plan. Um, all the plan requires your attention. The competitive environment, what's going on around us, what are the programs that we're doing, what's our funding level or potential level, what's our capacity to implement this thing. We can't just do pie in the sky. Uh, you might want a piece of your strategic plan with some future thinking of, of uh, the, the big audacious goals, and that's okay, but it's not everything. Capacity is a big piece. And then what's the leadership? Do you have the support? Is the structure in place for that? Um, that's absolutely critical, and we'll talk detail about that again as we jump through this semester, these next few weeks. Types of strategies. I just mentioned strategies. So think about this. Program strategy is different from a revenue strategy. So ASPCA, the, uh, the animal uh, group folks, really cool. They used to do uh, care and adoption. Care and adoption. That was their strategy. Now they're talking about prevention. How do we help spay and neuter animals so that we're preventing having so many uh, stray cats and dogs and things like that. Revenue strategy. An art museum might shift there where they used to just try to get people to come in and, and purchase these beautiful works of art and then get people to... Now let's, how about we, we rent the art out and do traveling exhibits and, and, and shift our strategy so that we can, one, reach more people, and two, bring in some money to help keep the operation going. Uh, organizational strategies, what are the new organizational goals you may need to adapt or adopt? Leadership strategies, I was on, and I'll give you an example of this, uh, a board, <laughs> a little win today, um, a board that uh, both govern and operate, 4-H Camp Graham down in South uh, Western Ohio. I was on the board for several years, and I used to carry a shovel like in my car, because in the, in the spring when the water lines would thaw and they would burst over the winter and we'd turn them on, there would be a, a leak, so I would run down and dig up the, the water line and replace the, the pipe. <laughs> Um, well, we finally hired somebody. We progressed enough to be able to hire somebody to operate that organization, that camp, and keep it going for the kids. And so the board did not have to do all of the work. So that was a, uh, that was a strategic move. And we actually did a full-on strategic plan. And I'll talk about that as well, or maybe even show you that, was, that one as an example. That was probably 10 or 15 years ago. Um, and, you know, thank heaven, we were very successful with it. Um, we had some real good outcomes. So uh, that camp was, was about to be sold or closed, and 
uh, and now it's 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 running new pool lots of things anyway all right so this semester uh, first steps we'll talk about uh, setting up for the su success is it the right time to plan what are the issues uh, who participates what information do you need who do you engage what stakeholders uh, internal external mission vision do you need to refresh those uh, a lot of organizations can't articulate their mission that's a problem I often start with that well actually I usually start with culture when I'm talking with somebody that says oh we need a strategic plan um, I, I started asking them about culture but anyway I'll share kind of that process with you uh, because when we're done here I really think you'll be able to do it too and that's my objective is to give you the right tools and the background so that if somebody or a board you're on or whatever it may be says we need a strategic plan that you'll be able to say you know I've kind of got an outline here and uh, and maybe I can walk us through this so, all right uh, section two and this again is in the optional book um, but it talks about the analysis part what's your environmental scan how do you do it? what's the theory of change kind of behind this on how organizations move or progress uh, maybe a program portfolio we just finish program uh, planning and uh, what's the business model the capacity of the organization leadership and then setting your course how do you get it started make those decisions make sure it's aligned and actually write the thing up uh, how do you then implement it how do you sync it with those work plans and budgets um, how do you plan for that change or have a dashboard where folks can can uh, log in and see what's going on and track the progress during this so that it doesn't just get sat on a shelf and forgotten about because that happens uh, more than you think hopefully it doesn't happen with plans that I do because I admonish the people it's like you this is a dynamic document you should be looking at this at every single board meeting yes it's that live and that relevant to the operation when I work with a group that's what comes out so anyway we'll, we'll get there definitions long-range so some some differences some nuances here in some of the wording long-range planning you're generally talking about what assumptions do we believe are going to hold true in the long run uh, like that this land is going to be worth millions of dollars for a long time because it's in such a prime location uh, it's going to hold true that this new building that we've got folks that need to come in and see and understand agriculture and have some hands-on experiences so that's a long-range plan that we really believe is going to happen hence we're investing the money here at Waterman Farm just across the street from Ohio State's uh, Columbus campus well this is part of the Columbus campus um, the business plan how do we address the flow of revenue uh, that's assuming that it's going to be predictable enough to borrow against that long-term uh, piece or then the strategic plan gets a little more detailed and it's when we're thinking about how the organization responds to the environment's that's dynamic that's changed and it's difficult to predict so again long-term vision but assuming these changes and adaptations are going to happen and occur uh, how do you incorporate the business plan uh, into your strategic plan as part of that analysis you think about your business model how do you bring those things together clear understanding how money comes in where it goes out and those things have to fit together because if not even if you're a nonprofit then you're not going to survive so uh, capacity building uh, strategic planning is organizational development OD is like a thing it's an entire thing by itself but in a in a small sense Strategic planning is helping build capacity, it's improving the functioning of the organization, strengthening it, uh, thinking about change, managing change, how that happens. Uh, Cotter, if you've read uh, Leading Change, those eight stages in the change process, some really good stuff. Um, creates credibility for the strategies by going through the process itself. The process itself is as important as the product in the end. Where did I start? I ask you, has anybody ever come in, a new boss, hey, here's our plan? It doesn't get very far because the process was missing. So that's a critical piece. Anyway, again, I'm going to give you fun examples and some real life stuff. Uh, time and money required. What are the factors? Well, you got to have finances. Um, I just, you can read these. <laughs> uh, but the time is critical. And I just mentioned that a minute ago. Um, thinking through and, and spending the time. We've invested the entire summer for the, the College of Food, Ag, Environmental Science strategic plan in meeting with about 21 or 22 different in-person meetings. 
460, whatever it was, people that we sat down and talked with and then narrowed data down and, and uh, spent time doing qualitative data analysis. So there's a lot that went into that in order to build trust among the staff, the faculty, to involve our stakeholders. Um, so all those things are a big factor in your strategic planning process. Uh, you've heard people say, perhaps, uh, well, strategic planning is dead, the pace of change, permanent whitewater, um, my computer's going to blow up my roof of my car. Um, yes, uh, things are changing at a super dynamic pace. That does not mean that we don't still need to take the time, in fact, now perhaps more than ever, to do the work of strategic planning. It's just, it's a critical piece, and you'll see why. Readiness, is the organization ready? Strategic planning, you know, says here it's a good idea only if the right people in the organization believe it's a good idea. We've got to have it at the leadership level. That's a critical piece um, because otherwise you won't get the follow through in the, in the implementation. And, and so there's not, if, if the leadership says, yeah, we're going to do a strategic plan, and then they set it on the shelf, then they've, they've lost. They've lost a tremendous opportunity. Uh, prerequisite is that true commi commitment. If it's an exec director, perhaps that you're working with in a small nonprofit somewhere, um, you've got to have that clarity in the reasons. And again, I've got a good tool. Uh, plan it's called Planning for Strategic Planning, I think. I just put this together uh, two years ago, um, but I'll share it uh, soon. And, um, and it kind of sets that stage <clears throat> and starts that conversation. Identifying the outcomes. Uh, you've got a why. you got to have the whys in there. Um, how do you address issues, strategic versus operational? Uh, because some things are, so you think about that. It's, it's a little bit nuanced, but it's very different. What do we need to do and plan for strategically versus just operationally? When I was in the, I talk about the paper industry all the time, of running those paper machines every day. Those paper machines, some of them, a couple of them were over 100 years old. <laughs> And we were still running these paper machines. There's a specific operation strategy and plan and maintenance and all that other thing. Very different from our strategic plan of thinking about how the paper industry is moving and evolving, how we're going paperless. I'm talking back in the 80s when we were having these conversations. Uh, we still have paper. They're still running those paper machines. Um, anyway, uh, non-negotiables. There are some things that, that, that aren't going to change. Um, and that could be just part of the operation, part of the business. So you've got to look at those. Uh, just ensuring clarity, agreement of purpose, things like that. <clears throat> Conditions for success. How can you make it success, successful? These are absolutely critical. Do you have um, the commitment involvement of the top leadership? And I mentioned this before. Do you have clarity of the roles of the people who are in the process? Uh, again, on our 2019 uh, college strategic alignment process, uh, I mentioned college leaders, chairs. We had a strategic alignment team, which was faculty and staff who came together to review uh, documents and data. Um, partners, external, internal to the college, funders, lots of people that we talked to. And, and all of those collectively were and are, as we're finishing now in the writing process, critical to making this plan successful. It's got to be balanced. <laughs> um, that makes sense. We talk about diversity. Uh, and we'll get into depth on that and give you some ideas for, uh, for doing that. So, uh, more conditions of success. And again, you can read down through these, but, uh, and, I'll, and I'll give you some examples in the coming weeks. Uh, the board and the staff, they have to understand, uh, they have to question the status quo. You have to look at new ways and, and think about potential. I've got some great exercises that I'll share with you that you can actually uh, do if you find yourself leading a, a strategic plan sometime in the future and asking people about potential, giving them some uh, kind of mind exercises uh, that are fun, that are very engaging. I'll share those with you. Um, no serious conflict of interest, high impact decisions. Um, oh, one, one thing that you won't be successful if you're in the middle of a, of a merger. <laughs> uh, and that happens sometimes in private industry. Where, uh, where you will have something like that. Um, it's delivery time. So, <laughs> I love it. Um, this is the entertainment value uh, of filming outside. Uh, is there a commitment to trying strategic planning process uh, in the annual planning budgeting process? So lots of things that play into this. Uh, data collection. I've mentioned a little bit most of these uh, mission documents, financial docs, leadership docs, lots of things to think about. 
Um, and then how do you design the process? And again, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do this in detail and uh, give you a lot of, of ideas and some actual tools that you'll be able to use. So apart from just the ones that are, that are in this, this book, this optional text. Uh, organizational profile, where are you starting? You gotta kind of have that baseline. <clears throat> uh, what do you look like? Who are you? What's that snapshot? And, uh, and then from there, you begin taking off. And I guess that's it. So again, 30,000 feet, quick hit, uh, discussion board, go online, hop on for that. And uh, just kind of that initial question to get the thing started. And I'll have a, uh, a second video where we're gonna dive in this week and really get going. And uh, so from Waterman Farm, Signing out. Talk to you soon.